Hello! In this tutorial we will show how to understand and interpret the information generated in a data profile. The tutorials contain some sample data that we will be profiling. Let's take a look at the data before we begin. We can see that there are about 139,000 records with 8 columns. The columns contain some basic information about people such as name, gender, address, and birth date. It also contains fields for social insurance number and card number. This could be the type of information stored by a bank or insurance company for example. In this tutorial we won't be showing how to create a profile but we will be using the plan files in the profiling tutorial folder so you can see for yourself how to do it. Here's the profile that was created from our data. We see in the table on the left that the same eight columns are listed and that there are several statistics shown for each of them. There are also tabs on the right which show more detailed information for the selected column. Let's start with the name column which is first in the list. The basic tab tells us that all 139,000 rows were analyzed and the counts table shows us that the name field did not contain any null values. Further we can see that there are about 6,700 duplicate names in this data set so we already know that we might have some work to do to consolidate the records. We can also see the minimum, median, and maximum values, statistics about the lengths of the names, and the first and last records sorted alphabetically in the data set. Looking at the Frequency Analysis tab, we can see that the word System Migration appears over 4,000 times in our data. We'll have to deal with this in the cleansing process and we'll hope that the other columns in these records contain meaningful data. We can also see that some of the names appear in the data set multiple times. Now let's take a look at the gender column and see what we can learn from the profile. The first thing that stands out is that 88% of the records are empty, so we can't expect to rely on this field very heavily. However, we can use some of the built-in algorithms to determine gender based on name, so we can fill in many of these fields later based on other information. Looking at the Frequency tab, we can see that some of the genders are written as a single letter abbreviation, and a small number of them are spelled out completely. Next, we'll look at the birthday column. There are many possible birthday formats, so we are particularly interested in how birthdates have been written in our data set. Hopefully there is some consistent pattern, but if not, we can easily create algorithms that can parse the different date formats and standardize them. Looking at the Frequency tab, we can see that about 25% of the birthdates are either empty or have null or NA as their content. We can also see that the most frequent non-null value is January 1st, 1900, which is unlikely to be accurate, so we can assume that these values are also invalid. Looking at the two least frequent values, we can also see some invalid entries. The Mass tab tells us that about 74% of the data is in the form number dash number dash number, with a very small number of records having a different format, such as being separated by periods or slashes. A mask is a way to ignore the specific content of a field and only look at its structure. By default, single letters are coded as L and single digits are coded as D. Now on to SIN values. Correct social insurance numbers should be exactly nine digits in length and unique to each individual. So, using profiling, we can check for these characteristics. First, the length. Looking at the statistics tables, we can see the length of the values in this column. We see the minimum length is 3 characters and the maximum length is 14, so we know that our data has some errors in it. Looking at the quantiles table, we can view slices of our data when it's arranged in order. It looks good until the 70th quantile, where we can see the letters SIN before the numbers. This continues for the last 30% of the data, so we know that we'll want to strip out this text during cleansing. This is a general overview of the information available in a data profile. Profiles can be created for data stored in database tables or plain text files. In this tutorial, we have shown how to use profiling to perform initial data analysis so that we can obtain basic statistics and information about our data. We also have a video tutorial on advanced profiling, which demonstrates additional capabilities of profiling. 